Thank you for joining me, this is Flat My Phantom. In this video, uh, we're going to be repairing uh, this, the Phantom 2 Vision Plus Wi-Fi module. Now, I have done two other videos on this. Uh, first one, uh, over four years ago, and the second one, uh, just over a year ago. And the reason why I'm going to do a third one is because the tool uh, that I wrote to help you flash it has changed. Uh, I'm also going to try and answer some of the questions that have been asked in the uh, comments on the last couple of videos. So what we're going to need is, of course, the module, your range extender. You're going to need the TTL's USB adapter, which is that there. You'll notice a little jumper. Uh, if there isn't a jumper, you need to get one that's set to 5 volts. It has to be 5 volts. Uh, screwdriver. I use this rather nice wow stick that I got purchased for me for Christmas. You're going to need a Phillips bit. Now, I also have this rather special bit. Uh, I'm not sure if you focus on that, because there's some little standoffs inside, and uh, this is a great tool for getting them out. Um, flux uh, for doing soldering with and of course solder itself and a razor blade and you're also of course going to need a solder iron. Now I have got the KSGER system uh, that's the that's the bit I use if I can get that to focus focus please there we go is that focus that's pretty much yeah well anyway it's a little tiny small flat bit um, which is ideal and I set that to 400 degrees uh, the pads on the Wi-Fi module are about the size of a pinhead. They don't like excess heat. They don't like having the solder iron on them for too long. If you do, you'll burn the pad off. If you burn any of the pads off, it's pretty much game over, especially the TX and RX pads. You can always find another ground point, but you won't find a 5 volt and you won't find a TX and RX. It's really, really important you assess your skill before you even attempt this. You'll notice uh, around the board there are plenty of spare pads. Uh, these pads aren't used in the process. So if you're not entirely sure, um, you know, you can always practice on these pads because if you do accidentally burn them off, uh, you, you're not going to lose anything. The, pad, the board will still work fine. So you've got maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven pads, uh, thirteen pads that you can practice on. So my advice is just actually have a practice on these little pads first of all before you go trying to attach your wires uh, to the pads that you're going to need. Because once that pad comes off, as I said, it's game over. Uh, there are companies, I believe, who've got microscopes who can you know, see the trace and connect to it. Um, I, don't, I don't have any of that equipment whatsoever. So if you are going to do this, as I said, please assess your technical skill. Right, so with that in mind, and you've got all the bits that you need laid out in front of you, uh, let's make a start and actually get the repair done. Okay, so first thing we're going to need to do is get the tool. The tool is a Visual Basic program, and I wrote it specifically because people had issues with uh, using DOS commands, changing directions and so on. So I thought I'll find an easier way. It has gone through many iterations until we finally got to the one currently in this video, which is the version 10. Now you'll notice on the screen uh, there is a Win 732 bit and a V10. Uh, the Windows 732 bit was due uh, because a chap called Keith got in touch with me about a couple of things and he mentioned he'd struggled to run the tool on an older Windows 7 environment. I dug out my Windows 7 laptop and rewrote the tool. So if you are on the older version of Windows, Windows 7, uh, that one would probably work best for you. But for us, uh, we're going to be using the Windows 10 version. You'll notice a slight change of scenery because I used some of the old video parts to save me having to go through it all over again. So to get the tool, we're going to left click on the file here and then over on the right hand side there's a download raw file button, click on that, that will download. Once it's downloaded you will find it in your downloads folder here, and there it is. We're going to install that file now and uh, have a look at the tool itself. So with the file downloaded, we're going to double click it to run and you get a little pop up box here, user account control, click yes and the installer will start. Okay, you're going to click next, you're going to agree to the license terms, if you don't agree you can't install the tool, click next. Now you'll notice it has the install directory set here. Do not change the install directory. The VB program relies on files being in a specific directory. If you put that anywhere else, the tool won't run, you'll just get a big XE error when it tries to run. Just click on next and it says the destination directory doesn't exist, you want it to be created, click yes and then click start, only takes a few seconds. Once it's done, click next and exit. You'll now see a shortcut on your desktop here, marked P2VPV10. Double click on that, and that will open the tool up here. 
Now this tool has everything you need, all the information you need. It, it runs everything, it does everything. I've made sure I've made it as foolproof as possible. Uh, the one thing people ask is, oh, what about the wiring? Click on the button here, and there's a big picture comes up on the screen, shows you how to wire it to the TTL adapter. We'll come to that later. It runs putty to check the boards in boot me mode. Uh, the YouTube guide will need to be updated because it's not going to take into account this one. There's a step-by-step -step guide by Oxdove, and of course, if you want to buy me a coffee because I've done really well, then feel free to buy me a coffee. Right, to take the module apart, there are four screws on here. Uh, once you set the screws off, the board comes out, and then there are four post screws. That's these little things here. Uh, so to take those out, I have this special bit uh, on my screwdriver. If I can hold that up there and focus it. Uh, this is in the Wow Stick collection that my son got me for Christmas. Take the four screws out, the four post screws out, take the board out. This is the board we're going to be working on here, and as you can see, little tiny contact points, which you're going to need to solder to, unless you're going to use the new non-solder technique. So this is the non-solder technique. I wish I'd found this, as I said, five or six years ago. It would have saved me so much time when it comes to doing repairs. These are pogo pin clamps. As you can see, you open them up, they've got spring-loaded pogo pins. What they do is they fix onto the test points on the board, like so, and hold it in place. To get that to focus on there for you, so you can see. Very difficult to get this camera to focus at times, but there you go. You can see it's now touching the three pins there. I'll leave the link in the description. You use the 2mm gap ones, um, DuPont, with the cables attached. So all I need to do when I'm doing this now is I just need to open these up, pop that onto the two there, make sure that hits the 5 volt there. This one then just comes in here, and I just clamp it on, like so. Make sure it's all lined up. Now I'm using double-sided tape just to hold my clamps in place for a second. Well that now is all ready to flash up. And of course to flash up you're going to need a TTL to USB adapter. You use this to plug into your computer and it speaks to the board. To wire it up is really, really simple. I'll just launch the picture from the tool. And as you can see here, your 5 volt goes to the 4th pin. Your TX and RX go to the 3rd and 4th pin. And your ground goes to the last pin on the board. Simple and easy as that. And of course, because you've got little connectors on here, you can just pop them on. And you're good to go. Okay, so with your board in your jig, if you've got a jig like mine, you'll notice here is the boot jump wire, and you have to short those two together there to put the board into boot mode, ready for programming up. So with that all done, I'm going to plug in the USB to TTL adapter to my computer, and you'll hear it go to say it's installed. We're going to run the tool, and it says choose USB port below. I'm going to drop that down. You'll see you've got USB serial port COM7. Your COM port may vary. Mine that currently is using COM7. Then I'm going to click to run put in. I'm going to check the boards in boot me mode. And as you can see, the board is now showing boot me, boot me. So it's ready to be programmed. Click OK to close that out. And you get a pop-up box here. If your tool doesn't show boot me, boot me, check you've got your little clips on correctly. Uh, make sure they're all lined up properly. and They're all working as they should do. Uh, if not, then check your TTL adapter is wired up correctly. Assuming you finally get it sorted out, it's just time to start flashing the board. So just click to start flashing. As again, this is now written in PowerShell, as opposed to previous versions, uh, which were written in DOS. It's an automatic script, no need to touch the keyboard, no need to do anything whatsoever. The process will run through. Now you get to this point here. If you start seeing a loop around of an error message of some sort, then the NAND chip has failed. And there's nothing I can do. All you can do is replace the NAND chip and build it, which is beyond the scope of this video. So unless you see this exact output appearing on the screen, then you've got absolutely no chance of ever getting that board to work. My apologies, my condolences, it's dead. This is almost finished at 60%. 70, 80, 90, 100% finished. Does its final bits of writing. The tool will close out, you'll be left with the screen here. You can read that if you want to later. Now what I like to do is I like to unplug the board like this. I like to relaunch the tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the jumper wire from the boot loop here. We're going to plug the board back in again. 
and I'm going to run Pudgy a second time, and you should now see an output like this. And this is the little board itself booting up, uh, checking its environment, making sure everything's all right. If you don't get this, then it hasn't worked, and my suggestion is to try flashing again. However, this may sound totally strange, I've had it before where I get nothing like this, but the board works. So if you don't get an output similar to what's being shown on screen, it's always a good idea just to put the board back together, temporary together, and then just plug it in and see if it works. If it doesn't, then just try reflashing it. If you do, if that doesn't work, then please do drop me a message in the comments or email me at flymyphantom at outlook.com and we'll discuss that further for you. So we're going to close that out now. Close that out. Job's done. That board is now flashed and is ready for reassembly. You can jump to reassembly. Uh, the video is segmented. Look in the description for it. Reassembly is no big deal. It's basically just a reverse of taking it apart. So now I'm going to do the soldered version, but I'm going to use the video from the old one. Okay, so let's get this board wired up. Uh, as I said, I've got my nice little holder here, which makes it easier for me. And uh, my little rig already set up. So I already know which order these going because I use this rig on a regular basis. But don't forget, uh, TX from here goes to RX on here, and RX on here goes to TX on here. Don't get the wrong way around, or else this, it, it won't work. It just won't do anything in the uh, putty tool, which I will show you in a moment. Now, just give me a second. Let's get these wires soldered on. I've just put some flux on the board to assist with the, uh, the soldering. So with that all soldered up, I'll probably sold it out of the way for a second and take off my big specs. I am wearing glasses so these little tiny things can be very hard to see. Alright, so that's the board all wired up as you can see. I've got my RX, my TX and my ground, my power and my boot loop there as per the instructions. Okay, so we're going to get this plugged in now and we're going to run the software on it. So just bear with me while I just plug that in and hope that you'll hear Windows find it. Let's switch over to the desktop where we are now going to run the tool. Okay, so running the tool is the exact same as running it with the non solder technique. Drop the box down, run pussy, check it's in boot me mode, which it is. And then just click to start flashing the board. Okay, and with that done, time to unplug, and we'll take off the wires that are attached to it. Again, be very gentle when you're taking them off. You don't want to pull a pad off, so just heat them up until they just literally just fall off like this. Now, what you can do if you want, uh, if you've used flux, you just use a bit of IPA just to clean the board off. I will save that to, for you to do if you want to. So let's put the little holder out the way. And all we need to do now is to plug this all together and uh, give it a test. So rather than me do all this in front of you, it's just a reverse operation of the, the opening procedure, put everything back and screw it together. Okay, with that all back together again, now it's now time to test the unit. So I need uh, my test rig, which is... This whole thing here, you've seen this before if you've watched the previous repair video. This is basically a Phantom 2 Vision with no motor arms or anything on it. So I'll just pop that on there like that. I'm going to plug that in. I'll put all the wires in, just the essential ones. Okay, I'm going to turn on the range extender, which thankfully has got battery life. 
I'm going to power up the test rig. Make sure that camera still works. There we go, that's still working fine. Look. Grab the iPad, which I use for testing. If you have uh, one of the later uh, versions of iPad, you probably may not work on them. You need something that's on iOS 12 or below. Uh, I need to go into Wi Fi. Let's go down to Wi Fi. And we're looking for the PS network. And it comes up. Let's turn that screen brightness down a bit. Ooh. There's the brightness on there. There we go. Let's turn that brightness down a touch so you can see it properly. There we go. Phantom Wi Fi has now appeared, as you can see on the screen there. Once that connects up, we're going to just open the app. There we go. I'm going to open the DJI Vision app, turn the camera on its side like so. Press the camera button, and if it all has worked the way it should do, we should now have output on this module. First time, it may just take a few seconds. But there you go, there's the output, there's the screen, there's the camera working. And as you can see, that module has now been repaired. Right, so that is it, the module has been repaired. I will replace the tape on this uh, before I send it back. Um, but that's it. That's easy and simple, it doesn't take long. Um, five or ten minutes, um, well, it takes me five or ten minutes because I've done so many of these. Uh, I think I've covered everything. If you do have any more questions, um, then please do leave me a comment below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I think that's it. So uh, good luck in your endeavor to fix your Wi-Fi module. But if you don't want to, um, there's an email link in the description box if you drop me an email. Uh, I do repairs in the UK and Oxdov does them on the American side. So get in touch, let me know where you are and I will advise you accordingly. Other than that, thanks very much for watching, take care and as always, fly safely.